everyone, this is Denise with Liquid Color, and I'm really excited to be bringing you this video today, and I'm getting to bring it to you earlier than I thought I would be able to. I found these tins on eBay. Um, they're vintage watercolor box sets from, I think, the 60s or so. It's from two different companies here, and it just came as a set, and um, I was really excited to be able to add them to my decor. I think I get my love for old vintage things from my grandmother who worked at the uh, History Museum in our, our local area. Um, and I always really enjoyed going there with her and I have little old vintage knickknacks around my apartment that I really enjoy looking at. So I was really excited for this Robin Hood watercolor tin one. I just think it's really cool looking. Um, but it turned out the inside of it is quite rusted. Um, I don't know how much of that you can see there, and it's very flimsy. Um, I don't think it would hold up to regular use, so this is just going to go somewhere to look nice. But this Playtime watercolor tin has little monkeys on the front of it here. This one is quite sturdy. It's still in really good shape, and it actually had a lot of the original paint in it. I think this is from the Biney and Smith company, which if I read correctly online was the parent company of Crayola, but don't quote me on that. I'm not entirely positive, but this is just on a little cardboard sheet. I pulled it out of the tin and I replaced it with some empty pans that I found on Amazon uh, for a very reasonable price. They came in a little set. Um, it comes in a, a little plastic carry case, so you could even use this to make your own palette that it comes in. The company is um, Otis, and there are 10 half pans and 10 full pans in here. Um, I was really excited to finally make my own pan watercolor set after having the other palettes that you've seen from me that I really enjoy working with, but I can't swap out colors very easily in them when I decide that I'd like to change something. So this will allow me to do that. So the first thing that I did is I pulled out the paints and I cleaned out all of the remaining paint that was in there from before and then I played around with how I wanted to lay out my pans so I tried a lot of different configurations and then just realized the easiest one is probably just to do 10 straight across of the whole pans and the half pans with the idea being that I'll put my most used colors in the larger pans and then putting some accent colors or just fun nice to have colors in the smaller pans so I started sticking these down with um, these adhesive dots called Zots and they're just I don't know if you can see them in the video they're just little pieces of really really sticky like double-sided tape and I started with the center pieces and worked my way out so that it would be nice and symmetrical if you're not plagued with OCD like I am, it won't matter too much, but for me, I wanted to make sure everything was, was lined up. I have a couple here that I haven't uh, stuck down yet that I wanted to show you. So all I'm doing is I'm putting the pan on a little adhesive dot, I'm rolling up the edge of it, and then I can stick that down, get this little pan out of the way, then I can stick that down into my watercolor set and press down and it'll stick nicely there for me. So I can repeat the process with the small one and just I'm pushing into the other pans to make sure that they line up really really well. It looks like this one that I already stuck down maybe the Zot got a little clunky underneath or folded over itself because it's sticking out a little bit. So I can just go ahead and take that adhesive off a new one on, trying to make sure it's flatter this time, and try and get that to sit down nicely in that little section. And here's just my last one, put our little Zot on, and cap it off on the end. Just to let you know, if you do decide to get a vintage tin to make a watercolor set out of, um, I thought this watercolor on the top would come off, but it was a staining color, and so I did scrub quite hard without wanting to damage the, the coating on this metal, um, and I wasn't able to get that off. So just be aware of that. Um, this tin has a much cleaner lid, and again, if it were a sturdier case, I would have used this one, um, but I did want it to hold up to being used on a regular basis. 
you can do this project with a variety of other types of tins. Like I mentioned, you could just stick your pans down into this box. A lot of people use Altoid tins or little like pill box containers. Um, so you can do this with anything that you like, making your own palette. And um, it's, it's nice and easy. Some people with these metal ones use magnets. I was going to do that, but um, I couldn't afford to buy the magnets. If you want to be nice and frugal, I just had my adhesive dots lying around from when I used a scrapbook and I uh, got that all squared away. All right, so then there's the stage where you're trying to figure out what colors to put in your palette. Now, I've never had a palette with 20 slots. My, my normal palettes have 18 in them, and it's always been a challenge to get down to the solid 18 that I want making up my set. But then when I came to this one, I actually had a hard time getting up to 20 because I'm so used to limiting myself. And even though it's only two slots, it messed with my head and, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but what I decided to do is I took a look at all the my workhorses, the ones that I use all the time, like Burnt Umber and Ultramarine Blue. And then I also took a look at what colors I don't use very often that were sitting in my stash. These are all of my watercolors that I have to choose from between Daniel Smith, Mission Gold, M. Graham, um, Windsor and Newton, and then I have a sample whole line in there as well. Um, so I took a look at which ones were the best in each area. I pulled some greens that I haven't used before that I'm really excited to kind of dive into. Um, I tried not to pick the greens that I'm used to, to working with, and I'm even going to try switching out my Burnt Santa with the transparent red oxide that I reviewed in my M. Graham video, and I wanted to add some of those M. Graham paints into this palette as well. I know I mentioned during that that I probably wasn't going to set up a palette again, but I got bit by the palette bug, so here I am. I'm also really excited to bring together all my different brands in this palette. Uh, having that little touch of OCD that I mentioned, I did want to try and make my palettes as consistent as possible using at first all Daniel Smith's and then I had an all uh, Mission Gold palette. Um, but I really wanted to take the best of each color and add it to this palette. Then I'll try using it for a little while, see what I like and what I don't like. And what's so great about this palette is that we have these individual pans that I can pull out. I can replace them with a different pan if I don't like it. And I can still keep that paint around in a convenient way. Um, for later if I decide I, I change my mind and want to use it again. With these palettes, you can pry out the paint that's in here, but then you just have a block of paint that you have to wrap up and, and save somewhere, whereas in the pan it's a little bit easier to store. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filling these up and I'm gonna speed up the process so you don't have to, to watch that in real time and then we'll swatch out the colors and I'll come back at the end to, to give you my final thoughts on it.
Okay everyone, I swatched out all my colors after putting them in their little pans and I have to say overall I'm pretty happy with them. The colors on my bottom row with the full pans are colors that if I remove the other 10 half pan colors from I would still have a really solid watercolor set. I've got darks, uh, natural brown colors, yellow, uh, red, blue, and green and I can mix a lot of different colors from those um, 10 on the bottom and then my upper row here with the half pans are colors that I don't absolutely have to have but are either nice to have or convenience colors or um, I'm going to look into seeing how they fit into my palette. So Crimson Link isn't a color that I've used before but I'm excited to see if it has a place in my palette if I need that color. Same thing with Vermilion. I know a lot of people like a really really orangish red in their palette but I haven't had one before so I'm excited to try that out. Um, Quinacridone Gold I haven't used in the past. It's really, really yellow um, to me, but I'll see if I can work that into any paintings. Um, Van Dyke Green is a color I haven't used before either, but I'm using it kind of in place of my Paraline Green and my, my regular palette. Um, so I'll just go over all the colors real quick so that if you see something that you like that you um, can feel free to, to look more into that. Uh, I did use codes down here. Um, not codes, <laughs> but uh, ac uh, initials, um, but one of the problems is that I have Mission Gold colors and I also have M Gram colors. So the Mission Gold colors are MM for Magello Mission Gold and then M Gram is just MG. So if you're just visually looking at this that um, can help you go through those. So I have Magello Blue for Mission Gold, Burnt Umber from Daniel Smith, Transparent Red Iron Oxide is the full name of this paint from M. Graham. Hansi Yellow from M. Graham, which is the equivalent of Hansi Yellow Light from Daniel Smith. Uh, Naphthal Red from uh, M. Graham. Carmine from Daniel Smith. Ultramarine Blue from M. Graham. Thalo Blue from M. Graham. Hooker's Green from Mission Gold. Olive Green from Mission Gold. Red Brown from Mission Gold. Uh, this is the Nickel Quinacridone Gold from M. Graham. Yellow Ochre from Daniel Smith. Permanent Yellow Deep from Mission Gold, but it's also referred to as Hansa Yellow Deep in uh, Daniel Smith's line. Vermilion from Mission Gold, which is a two color blend. It's not just the pigment that is typically known as Vermilion, so that's just something to note there. Um, Crimson Lake from Mission Gold. Dioxazine Violet from Windsor Newton, Prussian Blue from Mission Gold, Thalo Green or Windsor Green from Windsor Newton, and Van Dyke Green from Mission and Gold. Alrighty everyone, so that concludes our little tutorial today on how to make and fill your own vintage palettes or any other metal tins or plastic boxes that you might have lying around. I'm going to go ahead and let this dry uh, without using it for a couple of days just so that the paints can set up in their pans and it'll be easier to transfer with. This little vintage tin is not airtight so even if I leave it covered um, it should dry out fairly quickly but I can also leave it open a little bit if I want it to dry faster. If you like this video, please give it a nice big thumbs up below or comment and let me know uh, what your favorite part was or what your favorite colors were or if you have your own vintage palettes, uh, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, I look forward to sharing my next video with you as always. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time.